I'm here with Claire Jones from What Three Words. Thank you for taking the time to speak with Apps Africa. You're welcome. Can you tell us some more about What Three Words? Yeah. So What Three Words uh, is based around the fact that uh, the world's addressing system is very, actually very poor. So we might feel very lucky in London, for example, because we have postcodes and we can put those into Google Maps and usually get to approximately the right place with a bit of phoning each other to find out where you are, but generally get there. Actually, 75% of the world has very, very poor or inconsistent addressing systems. And that means, in fact, you have 4 billion people who are living without an address. So we said, well, this is mad. This shouldn't, this shouldn't mean, mean that you should, shouldn't be able to get health services or aid or order something online or meet your friends very easily. There should be lots of things you should be able to do and you can if you have an address. So we created a global addressing system using three words to talk about any specific place on the planet. So we took every three meter square of the planet and gave it a, uh, an address using three words. So for example, my old desk used to be at Banana Legs Broken. <laughs> and uh, there's another, uh, another example in London is our new office has a front door which is Index Home Raft. So these refer to three meter squares on the floor, like you would with the lat long coordinates, and each of those addresses is unique. It means I can search in the app, and I can, if I say to you, meet me at Index Home Raft, you type that into your app, there's the only one place in the world you can end up, which is at the front door of our office. So we actually have 57 trillion of these squares all around the world, 57 trillion, each of them has a three-word address. In fact, it has lots of three-word addresses in each of the different languages. So for example, we're in Swahili, and uh, French, and German, and Arabic launching shortly. So each of those squares you can refer to in whichever language you speak, and you can tell people where you are. You can ask for aid to be delivered. You can ask for a package to be delivered. You can start a business. There are all kinds of things you can do with an address that you can't do without an address. And are you seeing uh, businesses starting around this innovation of what three words? Well, so there are lots of businesses who are improving efficiencies around it. So you've got lots of people. So for example, cour courier and logistics companies, particularly in developing countries where maybe the addressing systems don't exist or they are uh, ineffective. And yeah, so for example, we have this, these brilliant guys in a who work in a favela outside Rio, Rio in Brazil, and they've really expanded their business because they've suddenly got all these customers they can reach in the favelas. So these customers who actually have disposable income and can order things online, you know, through NetShoes and all these different e-commerce sites, and they couldn't receive their packages before because they didn't have addresses. This is suddenly, these guys have gone out and said, right, here's a problem, we're gonna solve it. So now they deliver to people in the favelas. Right. Um we spoke about language. How do you combat all, and Africa's got so many different languages, for example, Nigeria. Yes. How yes. are you combating the language? So, it, for us it's a big thing. It, each new language takes a lot of work because we've got to go through it with native speakers. Um, so we have 10 languages now. We're launching lots more. We've got three Nigerian languages actually launching in uh, the next few months. So what we have to do with each of those is kind of come up with a word list, which is clean, which we can use. So you take out swear words and things like that. You also take out words that sound the same because we like it to work with voice. So you can't have homophones like where and clothes I wear and where are you. Uh, so we take out all of those and each of those word lists then gets sorted by how nice we think the words are. So how common are they in usage, which is why in London, for example, in the English version of the app, you've got words like index home raft, whereas in Siberia you might have words like overwhelmingly philosophical beguiling. So they're words that are less likely to be used and they therefore go in the less popular area. Pop there's less highly populated areas for each language. So Nigeria, of course, in the Nigerian version, will have the more common Hausa words in the Hausa version of the app in Nigeria. Again, Siberia is not, not going to need very common Hausa words. And can you tell us some more about the commercial model and, and how you guys charge yep. for, for the service? So we basically, what we, we charge at high volume for businesses. So if you are a taxi company and you are using this to find your passengers or to, to drop your passengers off at the right place and you're making money because your business is more efficient, your customers are happy, you're retaining customers, you're getting new customers, then if you're doing a huge amount of calls each month to our API, so what that means is basically we've got free apps and anyone can download them, they're free to use, but we also have some tech that means you can build it into your own app. So if you're a taxi company, you can build our three-word addressing into your app, which means people can use it within as part of that. And if you're using that a lot, if you're doing a lot of calls to that API every month, we'll start to charge you. It's, it's very cheap. The whole point for us is global adoption and then of course what that means is we can also do a lot of humanitarian and social impact work because we've got these uh, scaled pricing models that mean different kinds of businesses pay in different ways. 
And can you tell us some more uh, about the project you're doing in Tanzania and how, how all three words have been used to benefit yeah. social good? So we launched Swahili version and so we've seen a lot of uptake in, in Tanzania and countries in that area. But one example is that at the moment there's actually a cholera outbreak and uh, one of the problems you have is that you want to talk about very specific places like water points. And to describe a location of a water point or to uh, tell somebody else to go there or to mark it as infected, actually using a three-word address for that is a much more efficient way of doing it. It's actually much less likely to have errors in the transcription and communication. So if I, if I give you a latitude-longitude point, for example, I've, uh, that's a string of loads of numbers and I'm possibly going to get one of those wrong when I tell you or when you write it down or when I transcribe it from one place to another. So if I can tell you a three-word address of it, it means you can know exactly where I'm talking about, which means in Tanzania for example you've got people going out and they've got smartphones with whatsapp and what three words on and they're able to collect information about water points so they can say here's a three word address of an infected water, water point or here's a three word address of a clean water point and all the other things you want to do with water points and cholera it means you're able to in, you're enabling people who are delivering services on the ground who are delivering health interventions like cholera and malaria prevention you're helping them make it much more efficient and and uh, much less error prone as well great and What's the plan for Africa in, in long term? Yeah, so, uh, well, what's the plan for everywhere? Africa is obviously has lots going on in terms of business, so we, we love it when logistics and navigation and e-commerce people are, are building us into their tech. That's really exciting, particularly in Africa where you've got so many entrepreneurs who are doing really exciting things and they often there's like these great hyper-local entrepreneurs who are saying, we can do logistics within Lagos really brilliantly and they're able to build us in and that's really exciting. So that's really great and it's really great when it's governments and it's brilliant when it's uh, you know talking to the UN and people like that about addressing informal settlements. So they're all these kind of things, but a lot of the really exciting things for us are about businesses and businesses being able to use it in travel so you want to tell everyone about the great tourist locations in Lagos you can use three-word addresses so travel navigation logistics these are big UAVs of course with drones and things there's loads of uses for those for deliveries for example but also for in, in conservation projects so uh, animal search and rescue or you know ass assessing mangrove populations there are all kinds of things you can do with drones that what three words will enable and, and, and support the uh, projects on the ground.